Hi there, welcome to this video that came in as a request about what is the number one thing I always install on my cluster. And I can answer that hands down, it's always Argo CD. And that's usually the only thing I manually install. In fact, perhaps it's through Terraform, perhaps it's through CI CD, but needless to say, it's always gonna be Argo CD for me that goes onto my cluster. I'm gonna explain why in this video, I'm gonna show you the pattern that I use and how you can use that to be successful in your own clusters as well. Now, as ever, I do include examples. This is a fully working repository that you can just go off and spin up. Uh, it's GitOps Kubernetes Bootstrap. If you have questions, check the links out. I've got my Slack group in there, uh, or you can ask me directly through DM on Twitter if you follow my, uh, my account there. So let's just take a look at this uh, and understand what this repository is. I'm sure a bunch of you folks are familiar with Argo CD. There's also, of course, Argo Workflows, which is a different project, but Argo CD is the, um, the continuous uh, deployment side of Argo that allows you to sync through a GitOps process. So let's just understand uh, what the expectation is here, right? So Argo in this example would be running as the one thing that I set up in my cluster. And I'm effectively telling it what to then go do. So all of these things highlighted here get deployed out. And this is just an example of projects, right, that I've just picked. Um, and what's really cool about this is this effectively is a repository that is outside of Argo and I can modify, I can have PRs, I can have a whole team of people working on it. And that is the be all and end all of what I need to define what is going on in my Kate's cluster. So this is a really exciting uh, idiomatic approach to GitOps, but also it gives you a level of provenance, right? So if something changes in one of these, I know what's going on. So GitOps has a whole bunch of reasons why it exists. Uh, I'm super excited about it. I've used it for a couple of years and I wanna show you one of the best ways uh, that I found to do the fiddly stuff, right? Because everyone's like, yeah, just get this up and running, but people don't really think about what do I need to customize stuff? So let's take a look at this repository. This is called GitOps Cluster Bootstrap. You'll see it has a bunch of folders in here. The most important things to understand are the bootstrap YAML and the application templates. So this repository is effectively a Helm chart. The Helm chart of this repository, uh, if it renders the templates into a single Helm template. So what I mean by that is if you go Helm template dot, that renders the Helm output, right? And all this rendered output is just a list of applications. But to even get that far, we have to point it at this primary application. So what we're doing, and I'll show you this, is when Argo starts, is this application uh, gets effectively loaded into Argo as a kind of a springboard. This pattern is called app of apps. You know, I didn't invent this. This is just a well-known idiom uh, for working with GitOps. However, the app of apps pattern basically then says, hey, I'm an application, but go out and check me from, mass, uh, from main branch on this path render the templates, and then you'll get all the other applications. So I know that sounds pretty vague and probably sounds kind of complicated. So let's just have a look. If we go to Argo CD, so I'm just gonna hop into the server running on my local cluster. Okay, I'm gonna sign in. Now, to make this fully automated, what do you need to do? Well, the two things that need to be applied into the cluster are, oops, I need to jump back into my port forward. Um, the two things that need to be applied are, firstly, the Argo chart, and you can do that through, as I said, through Terraform, through Helm, whatever your, your poison is, and then you need to apply the bootstrap.yaml. Now, I've expressed how this works in the documentation for getting up and started. So, create the namespace Argo, apply the Argo CD server, uh, grab the password, just so you got it, and do a bootstrap apply. Again, you can make this into a GitHub action, you can, you can fully automate this. But once you've done this, this creates bootstrap, and you'll see that bootstrap, if you look, it has all of these sub applications because bootstrap has recognized these templates are all references to applications. So if I click on one of these, for example, logging, it understands that logging needs to be deployed at a um, top level here as a subordinate of bootstrap. And because I've got an annotation here in logging, this finalizer um, effectively says that it's part of the Argo CD um, web of applications. So it needs to be finalized on all the resources in this before it gets deleted. It creates a really nice effect where you can delete 
uh, the bootstrap and it will delete all of these other projects, right? All of these other applications go down when this gets deleted. Equally, let's say I make a change in the GitHub repository. I decide that I want to change a value. It will, you do a sync and it will refresh it in that application. So there's a whole bunch of stuff to talk about there I haven't covered yet, right? Like how we do customization, how we do all this sort of stuff. So let's just take a quick recap. I've got effectively a Git repository. It has a bootstrap YAML that describes the initial application. That then gives you the springboard for all these applications in the same repository. And that's the trick is we're only using one repo. We don't have to have like 15 different repositories. So with that one repository, we're storing not only the applications we want to install, but this second sneaky thing that I built called resources. So some applications have custom resources, right? So what you do is you create a Helm chart inside of this, of this repository and you reference it. So bootstrap resources becomes another application, but you'll see the difference is that I'm sourcing the path of bootstrap resources rather than dot. So it, it's a subfolder in this repository. Why do I need this? Well, have a look on here, right? I've got a let's encrypt issuer. I have an ingress. You can see the TLS for Grafana um, hasn't been created. You might have guessed, but if you're running on localhost, part of the way that the um, HTTP challenge works for Cert Manager is it needs you to have the DNS name registered so it can then hit the ephemeral pod. So I haven't got this exposed to the web, so it's a bit unhappy with this certificate. But this is really a powerful idiom because I'm able to express my ingresses as a separate resource. You know, I might have a use the new gateway um, API that Kate's has got in beta now. I might have a bunch of gateway resources. Equally, I might have clusters, I might have secrets, I might have all sorts of stuff in this bootstrap resources. This also lets you use sealed secrets in a separate place. So you can see here, I've got an ingress for, um, for Grafana, I've got a cluster issuer, and a bunch of other stuff as well. So it's really nice that you've got this ability to have the bootstrap and bootstrap resources. The way that you keep this from running after is you set sync wave, so an Argo CD annotation called a sync wave on the other application. So they're in a sync wave at zero, and this would be in minus one or below. You can see as well that by, if I go to another example, running a lower sync wave will run something before. So in the case of the logging or the observability stacks, I need some CRDs set up. Those CRDs are running a lower sync wave. Equally, I could have put them in the bootstrap resources, but because there's kind of a few of them and it's an external project from Prometheus community, I don't do that, right? So the bootstrap resources concept in this regard is stuff that you need for your cluster, right? So you could even put sealed secrets, you could put service accounts, and that's all managed um, through the, the lineage of the way that the application rolls out its owner references and its dependence. So a super nice, super simple way to do it. I want to just give you an illustration of actually how this does, how this all looks, right? So let's do a deletion of the bootstrap project. So what would you expect to happen here? Well, my expectation is that because the primary resources of this are other applications, you're effectively calling a delete on those applications. So we go into Argo applications, you'll see that it's starting to progress them in reverse order, right? So it's, it's progressing them backwards so they're going to start being deleted. So what you'll see happening over time is that things are being shut down. So you can see now that observability has been stopped. You'll see that the, uh, the, the well-known CATS project that I've created has been stopped, as well as Cert Manager and a bunch of other stuff. And this goes in reverse as well. So this effectively allows you to tear down a cluster in a super clean way and put it back together. So let's do an apply just to show that this all works. So we're going to acute control, apply, bootstrap. What's going to happen is Argo CD will see that the bootstrap is an application. It's then going to sync that. And lo and behold, it's pulling that from the Git repository and everything is spinning back up. You see how quick that was, right? There are people scratching their heads over the solution, right? Because they, they're trying to figure out how to apply their CI CD processes plus GitOps. And it's all a very confusing world to live in. But the practical implementation of this is astoundingly simple, right? As I've shown you here, this is now setting up in about three to four minutes. What I love about this is it's in a box, right? That Argo CD in a box approach means that it doesn't matter if I've got um, an Oracle Cloud, an EKS cluster, a GKE cluster, a MicroKates cluster, I can just apply this. The one last thing that I'm going to show you is what about customization, right? I've expressed um, these applications very simply. Now, because this is a Helm chart, 
you can also pass values around using the Golang YAML interpolation. Here's an example, right? So value observability retention, that might vary on cloud. Storage class might vary on cloud. But you might say, well, how do you sort that out? Well, because Bootstrap Resources is based on, as a Helm template, you can use values at the root of it and pass the values into the applications that then pass them in. So let me slow that down, right? You've got something, for example, like um, observability. Observability has cube uh, prom stack inside of it. Cube prom stack has Prometheus operator. And Prometheus operator has a well-known set of values that that Helm chart takes. One of those values uh, is retention. So to pass retention all the way through here, what you would want to do is in observability is you'd set retention uh, as a Helm value. So you can see down here goes to Prometheus, Prometheus spec retention. This block here isn't magic. This just comes from the Qprom stacks um, Helm values. And I've pasted that in with all the ones that I, I care about. You can equally give values not just as an inline file, but you can give them as key value pairs uh, in here as well. So another example might be here. You can see that Helm parameters are set, controller kind, daemon set. I prefer to run Nginx as a daemon set as opposed to a deployment. So that is how you pass values in, right? You can put set your values here. And this, this values file could be overridden. In my example, I have automated set to true. But not everybody would want the bootstrap files automate. But for example, you might apply it once and override the parameters that are set for that particular implementation and say, yep, yeah, I'm happy with this cluster. That's how that's set. Or you might want to set secrets in that. Um, with, and again, using a, something like um, HashiCorp's vault secret path and then decapsulate those inside the application or some other method. The point being is that the bootstrap is easily configurable per cloud, right? So suddenly I switch to another cloud like uh, DigitalOcean, my storage class, I can just edit and switch that and it will, ag it will uh, aggregate um, all the changes and apply them. So it's super simple to use. I hope you found this video interesting. I get really excited about this stuff because it's a great enabler. Um, check out the repository and go apply it. It works out of the box for microcates. You may have to add change some values for your cloud. Let me know how you got on. Again, I have a Slack community now, so please do feedback to that or leave a message in the comment. Again, like and subscribe if you think this is valuable. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.